Hi, in today's video I'm going to show you how to create a virtual microphone in Linux using Pulse Audio. If you use OBS Studio you might have come across tutorials showing you how to create virtual cables on Windows and Mac um, using the virtual cable software. So today what I'm going to do is show you how to do the same thing on Linux using Pulse Audio and make it persistent so that it survives reboots and you don't have to keep entering the same commands in the terminal every time you want to set up the virtual microphone. So I'll switch across to the Linux machine and show you the commands that we're going to run. So first of all, what we're going to do is um, run some commands in the terminal to create the um, virtual microphone. And then I'll show you how to uh, save the settings in the default.pa pulse audio configuration file so they survive a reboot and you don't have to enter the commands every time you want to create the virtual microphone. So first of all, what you do is open the terminal and as your regular user, not as root, um, what we would do is run PACTL load module, module dash null sync, sync name, and then we'd give the null sync a name. In this case, I'm going to call it source. And then we're going to load another module, um, PACTL load module, module virtual source, source name, and then we're going to give it a name. And this is what will appear in um, chat programs um, and various other programs we want to use the virtual microphone in. So in this case, I'm going to call the source name virtual mic. And then we set the master to be source.monitor, which is the output of the null sync that we created. And once you run these commands in the terminal, you'll then have a um, virtual microphone. And basically this is like the virtual cables on uh, Windows in that you have a output um, from one program that then becomes a virtual microphone in another program. So what I'm going to do now is actually show you the way that you can set this to survive reboots um, using the um, default.pa pulse audio configuration file. So I'll leave a um, link to this document under the video. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to create the null sync and virtual source using the default PA pulse audio configuration file. And the way we do that is by creating a file in our home di um, directory called um, in dot config pulse and it's going to be called default.pa and this is a pulse audio configuration file um, for our user and what we're going to do is we create the file at that location and then open it with our text editor and then if I just come down here this is the um, block of code that we're going to put into the default.pa configuration file and these um, lines that begin with a hash are comments so that um, just makes it more readable. So the first line down here is include except for pulse audio uh, default.pa, which is the system wide pulse audio configuration file. So what we're going to do is basically include the default configuration file and append some options to it. So what that means is it's not going to mess with your existing setup is just going to add um, the, these extra options to create the virtual microphone every time the computer boots up. So it will basically take in all your system settings from your default Pulse Audio setup from your, um, from your system and then append um, a couple of options to create this virtual microphone. So first of all what we're going to do is create the null sync and looking at the configuration in the default Pulse Audio file, um, it has a syntax where it checks to see that the module exists um, before it loads it. So what we're doing is saying, if it exists module null sync.so, then load the um, module null sync and give it a sync name of source. So as I said, what it will do is it will check the um, actual null sync pulse audio um, module is actually available before it tries to create the um, sync which is good practice 
And then after that, what we're going to do is do the same thing for the virtual source. We're going to say if exists module virtual source dot so load module module virtual source source name we're going to call it virtual microphone virtual mic and the master is going to be the source monitor. So what we do is we save that in the um, this location up here config pulse default dot pa and then what we're going to do is reboot the computer and after we've done that um, what will happen is if I just switch back to the Linux machine um, make sure I'm on the right desktop here um, if I come across um, to the um, pulse audio volume control what you'll see is in the recording um, output we have virtual source stream of virtual source virtual mic on monitor of null output and then the output devices you'll see we have null output so what that means is um, we can now hook up programs like OBS studio to chat programs like Google chat Skype um, zoom etc and send the audio from OBS studio into those applications so what I'll do is um, come across to OBS studio here and show you how this um, actually works so if we come across into our settings up here and then go to the um, audio um, I don't have the microphone plugged in so you can see here it's not available but the important thing is we come down to the advanced section and monitoring device and what we do is we set that to monitor of null output now what this is going to do is normally um, your monitoring device would be your headphones so if you were talking into your microphone and you'd got your microphone set to monitor um, an output it would record the audio but it will also send the audio to your headphones um, so that you'd be able to hear what you're saying as um, you're recording uh, but that's quite distracting what this will allow us to do is send the output from OBS studio into this monitor of null output which will then show up as a virtual microphone in chat programs like Google chat etc so that's step one is that we come into our OBS studio settings audio and we set advanced monitoring device to monitor of null output now the next step that you need to do is um, if I come across here I don't know if I've got this set up if I click on my microphone which is currently disabled and go to advanced audio properties if I had another um, audio source here um, you'd see it listed you know like desktop audio etc what we want to do is basically set the audio to be recorded and also output to the virtual microphone and the way we do that is we come across into the advanced audio properties and we select the audio monitoring and we set monitor we set it to monitor and output and what that's going to do is it will record the on um, the audio as the output but it will also send the audio to the monitor device so in effect what it's doing is it's splitting the audio stream in two and it's recording the audio stream and sending it to the monitor device which as I said normally would be your headphones where you'd hear it but in this case we're setting it to monitor of null output so basically what that means is you won't hear the audio because it's being sent to this virtual audio device so what you would basically do is for all your audio sources that you want to send to your virtual microphone you would set them to audio monitoring monitor and output now if you have a um, a guest um, if you set OBS studio up to record a a call where you have a guest uh, a host and a guest from say Skype or um, Google chat or zoom etc you don't want to send their audio back to them so this is why this is really important because what it lets you do is selectively choose which 
audio device you want to send to the virtual microphone and back into the chat program. So for example, if I was capturing uh, Zoom and I was capturing the desktop audio um, to record the other side of the conversation, I would have another audio device listed here called desktop audio. And for desktop audio, which would be the output of Zoom, the, the, the guest talking, I would set that to monitor off. And basically what that would do is it would record the audio, but it wouldn't send it to the monitoring device and then back into the virtual microphone and back into the chat program. Because if you do that, they're going to get a loop back. They'd be able to hear themselves coming back through your audio. So we don't want to do that. So for your audio, what you do for your microphone is you set it to monitor and output. That sends it to the null audio device and into the virtual microphone. But if this was the desktop audio, what you would do is you would set that to monitor off so that the audio would be recorded but wouldn't be sent back into the chat program. So once you've done that and you've got your microphone set to monitor and output and the desktop audio um, coming from Zoom or the chat pro program to monitor off, you would then be able to open the chat program and select the virtual microphone, which is only then going to pick up your microphone and not the guest's audio coming into OBS and then sort of sending it back into the chat program. So what I'll do is I'll come across here and show you how that would look. If you're opening Google Meet, for example, what you would do is you'd click on the little um, three, tri three dots um, by the camera and that will open up the settings. And in the settings, what you'd be able to do is for the video device, you would be able to select the virtual um, camera that you've created on Linux, which is needed um, because you can't use NDI virtual input on Linux because it's not available. So on Linux, what we you have to do is use the virtual camera and a virtual microphone. And I'll do another video on setting this up completely on Mac, Linux and Windows coming up soon. But for Linux, what you would do is you'd set the video to the virtual camera and under the audio section, you would set, set that to virtual source, virtual mic or monitor of null output. And basically what that's going to do is that's going to take the all the audio from OBS Studio and pipe it into Google, Google Meet in this example, but without the guests' audio being looped back to them. Because if you just send, if you bring audio from a chat program into OBS Studio, and then you just send all the audio from OBS Studio back into the chat program, you're going to be sending the audio from the chat program back into itself, creating a loopback effect. So the guest on the other end is going to be hearing themselves um, looped back over the video stream, which you don't want. So as I showed you in the previous example, what you do is you set the monitor device to null output um, in the audio settings in OBS Studio. And then in the advanced audio properties, you select the audio stream and if you want to send it back into the chat program, for example, your microphone, you set that to monitor and output. And for the guest's audio, you just set that to monitor off. So basically what that means is you're then recording both sides of the conversation. You can you can hear the audio coming through um, your desk, you, your headphones, and it's been recorded in OBS Studio and being pumped back into the chat program, but without the guest's audio. So in our next video, what I'll do is I'll do a um, complete guide on Mac, Windows and Linux on how you can use virtual cables and pulse audio to route the audio from OBS Studio into any chat program and back again without getting any loopback effect. So that's the um, 
the way that you would create the virtual microphone on Linux. And I'll just um, swap back um, to give you a quick recap on the commands. Basically, I say what we do, first of all, is if you just want to try this out without rebooting, you can run PACTL load module, module null sync, sync name, and then give it a name. In this case, I'm just calling it source. And then the next command would be um, PACTL load module, module virtual source, source name. And this is the name that is going to show up in the chat program that you're going to be using. So we're just going to call it virtual mic. And the master is source.monitor. So that's the monitoring of the null sync that we created. Then basically what you would do is you create your Pulse Audio configuration file in your home directory in .config pulse default.pa. And what you do then is just come down and grab this bit of code. And said so basically, first of all, what we do is we include the default Pulse Audio configuration and then just append some options to it to create the null sync by first checking if the module's available and then loading the module and creating the sync. And then again, for the virtual source, we check if the module is available and then we load it and give it a source name and tell it what to monitor. Once you've rebooted, the um, microphone will then be uh, available. As I said, if you just come into the Pulse Audio configuration, you will then see in recording virtual source stream of virtual mic and in the output you will see the null output and um, what you can also do is this is basically the same as creating cable a on windows with the virtual cables uh, what you could do you can create a cable b as it were so you could use this technique to, to create a another virtual cable so a virtual speaker for example so what you could do is do exactly the same thing here um, you can see I'm loading these modules we could call this um, source 2 um, and virtual speaker and basically what that would then do is create a second virtual cable as it were so we'd be creating a virtual microphone and a virtual speaker uh, that would allow us to basically route audio between programs a bit more easily on Linux, which would be the equivalent of the um, virtual cables on on Windows. So on Windows and Mac, you can use the virtual audio cables to create a fake microphone and speaker that you can then plug in to OBS and any chat program to get the audio back in and out but we've got Pulse Audio on Linux so we can do the same thing with just a couple of commands and a configuration file and it will survive reboots so that it will always be available and you don't have to run a command in the terminal every time you start up OBS to create the virtual microphone which would be a bit of a pain because you might forget to do it and it's an extra um, extra step in the workflow so we can create the uh, virtual microphone so that it's always available for us in OBS Studio and other programs so that we can pipe the audio out of OBS Studio into a chat program and then back again and back to the chat program, but crucially without sending the guest's audio back to them, creating a loop back effect. So that's how you can use Pulse Audio to create a virtual microphone on Linux. And what I'll do is in another video, I'll show you how you can do use this technique to pump stuff into um, Skype, Zoom, um, other chat programs, either using a virtual camera and a virtual microphone or NDI audio and video or NDI and a virtual cable. So that's coming up in the next video. But this was a video on how you can use Pulse Audio on Linux to create a virtual mic that you can use with OBS Studio and some chat programs to either broadcast or record a video chat.